Did you know that because of the imported beer virus, some clinics are now doing drive through Botox? Thank you, doctor. Now I am going to drive home. That might seem strange to you, but that has nothing on the extreme plastic surgery and body mods in this video. Starting off strong, Joel Migler has a literal hole through his face. Bruh, how do you live never truly being able to close your mouth? Can he hold liquids in his mouth, or do they just slowly drizzle out the sides? Mark my words, Joel, if I ever see you at a restaurant, I'm making spitballs with the little straw paper and seeing if I can get 100 points through that skee-ball jackpot hole in your face. I know everybody's already thinking it, so I'm just gonna say it. What are the holes for? Are the holes for what I think they're for? Next up is Paul Lawrence, aka Enigma. Enigma sports horn implants, reshaped ears, multiple piercings, and a full body puzzle tattoo. In addition to resembling a trans-dimensional demon from a land that someone would be transported to after shotgunning a pressurized can of spray-on Old Spice deodorant, he's also a very impressive performance artist that's been studying music since the age of six. Enigma swallows swords, drills power drills into his nose, and he drinks a bunch of liquid and then pumps it out of his stomach only to re-drink it, among other death-defying stunts. Enigma has an extensive media career, having worked on projects such as The X-Files, National Geographic, Ripley's Believe It or Not, and Universal Studio Orlando's Halloween Horror Nights. He's also toured with bands such as Nine Inch Nails, Marilyn Manson, Korn, Godsmack, and he once opened for David Bowie. Straight up, he shows that you shouldn't judge people based on how they look. I really do admire his passion, commitment to the craft, and ability to play to his strengths. Next up is Pixie Fox. Pixie wants to have the world's smallest waist, and to achieve this look, she wears a corset every day, eats only very small meals, and has had six ribs surgically removed. She has an 18-inch waistband. I know people with bigger biceps than this. Rib removal surgery increases the likelihood that you'll damage your organs because you don't have any ribs. She also has noted that she can no longer eat bulky meals because it makes her feel physically uncomfortable. Therefore, she has started blending all of her food. Next up is a man who calls himself Stalking Cat. This was a man hailing from a native tribe that believed in spirit animals. Because of this, he has undergone extensive body modification to look more like his spirit animal, the tiger. Stalking Cat sported tiger striped tattoos, a flattened nose, brow implants, sharpened teeth, elongated ears, synthetic whiskers that he would thread through holes in his lips, and to top it all off, a wearable animatronic tail that he controls with a handheld remote. Since many of these body mods aren't legal for doctors to perform in the United States, Stalking Cat had to do this without any anesthesia. Unfortunately, this extraordinary man passed away in 2012. Another animal man that I like is the Lizard Man, aka Eric Sprague. The Lizard Man has undergone 700 hours of tattoo sessions to give him his realistic reptilian scales. Eric also bears a forked tongue, sharpened teeth, and implants in his eyebrows to give him the classic scaly ridge like a lizard. The Lizard Man is a sideshow performance artist who performs feats such as putting corkscrews through his face, suspending himself in the air with his piercings, power drilling into his nose, and topping it all off by letting a snake into his nose and having it slither out his mouth through his sinuses. Will you please go in my eye hole? Daddy needs attention because he's insecure. Okay, after those last two, I can't be the only one who's imagining making them fight. Two literal animal men who have incredibly high pain tolerances and a no holds barred cage match covered both by ESPN and Animal Planet, an interspecies smackdown that would be sure to go down in history. I'm talking Mortal Kombat in real life. Last, but certainly not least, is Martina Big. Martina started her life with a fairly pale complexion, and after a tanning addiction, she became obsessed with darkening her skin. So much so that she began to take injections of a substance known as melotonin. She claims it only took three injections to completely change her skin color. She says that deep down she feels that she is an African woman, and she flew to Kenya to have an African baptism? Being a white Jew, I like to reflect on my own perspective and be very sensitive with issues like race because I know it affects a lot of people very deeply, and I can really only see from my own perspective. So, the only statement I can be confident in making when I see Martina Big is that I am fucking confused. So nobody gets the wrong idea. I just want to say that I'm all for people doing whatever they want with their bodies. And I'm not intending to attack or harass anyone in this video. Even some of the more dangerous stuff. If you want to inject ink into your eye and risk blindness, that should be your right. Joel, I'm sorry if I went so hard on you, but you gotta understand that there will never be any shortage of you have a hole in your face jokes. 
To be honest, some of the people in this video look pretty cool in my opinion. Not something I would do myself, but they definitely do stand out from a crowd, and in my opinion, in a good way. Too many people just look normal. In another life, maybe I'd be getting covered head to toe in eyeball tattoos with AZFK across the chest. But not in this life, because I'm too much of a coward to commit to anything permanent. Body paint and ink boxes more than enough for me right now. If you like this video, please subscribe, drop me a like, and hit the bell. It really helps out the channel. Sorry if you were hoping for more illustrations than pictures. Because this video was about real people, I thought it fit better. On that note, I want to thank the incredibly talented Supic for drawing Enigma. He's drawn pieces of fan art for the show before, and I really connected with his art style, so I thought it would be a cool thing to have him on the show. He has a YouTube channel that you should be checking out, because he has some dope music over there. I'll link it in the end card. Also, about those hats, it looks like I might be moving forward with those. I'm not going to be doing it on my Redbubble shop, so I'll probably be making it on my own with contact with a separate company. If you want to buy it, be on the lookout for that. As always, like, sub, and hit the bell, and I will see you all in hell. Okay, bye.